Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast aimed at intermediate to advanced level English learners. Is democracy dying? According to a recently released report, the answer might be yes. Freedom House's democracy rankings for 2020 were released last week, and the findings were shocking. In this episode, we'll talk about their conclusions, how Freedom House is able to assess democracy, and discuss why democracy might be struggling. But first, why not follow the Thinking in English Instagram page, Thinking in English podcast, or the link is in the description. And you definitely should look at our blog, thinkinginenglish.blog, for all transcripts and bonus content. Here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on our blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. To collapse. To collapse. This means to suddenly fail, be unable to continue, or work correctly. For example, the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 1990s. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. If something is unprecedented, it has never happened or existed in the past. For example, unemployment has reached an unprecedented level. Reliable. Reliable. Someone or something that is reliable can be trusted or believed because he, she or it works or behaves well in the way expected. For example, is your watch reliable or is it a little slow? Unstable. Unstable. Not solid and firm and therefore not strong safe or likely to last. For instance, that chair looks really unstable. Deterioration. Deterioration. Deterioration is the fact or process of becoming worse. For example, we've seen a deterioration in relations between the countries. Secretive. Secretive. People or organisations who are secretive hide their feelings, thoughts, intentions and actions from other people. For instance, he's being very secretive about his new girlfriend. Surveillance. Surveillance. This is the careful watching of a person or place especially by the police or army, because of a crime that has happened or is expected to happen. More banks are now installing surveillance cameras. To enforce. To enforce. This means to make people obey a law. For instance, it isn't always easy for the police to enforce speed limits. And finally, bribery. Bribery. Bribery is an attempt to make someone do something for you by giving that person money, presents or something else that they wanted. For example, some cultures consider tipping waiters bribery while in others it's considered an insult if you don't leave a tip. Is democracy dying? 20 years ago, the answer to this question would have been a strong no. If anything, the opposite was true. All around the world, more and more countries were moving towards democracy. A majority of former colonies, such as India, had become independent, 
Former dictatorships in Latin America were holding free and fair elections. And the Soviet Union and Eastern European communist states had collapsed. There was such confidence in the victory of democracy over all other forms of government in the late 1990s. If you have ever studied political science or history or some other related subject, you might have heard of Francis Fukuyama's famous book from 1992, The End of History and the Last Man. In the book, Fukuyama argues that American-style liberal democracy was so strong and all other alternatives to democracy were so weak that the world had reached its final stage of political development. Democracy was now unbeatable, and history had ended. That was 25 years ago. More than 25 years ago now, in fact. In 2021, the answer to the question, is democracy dying, might actually be yes. According to the Freedom House's newly released 2021 Freedom in the World report, there has been an unprecedented decline in the health of the world's democracies. Freedom House is an organisation which produces an annual evidence-based survey into the levels of democracy and freedom globally. I'll talk more about how they do, it, do this shortly. 2020 experienced the biggest decline in the history of Freedom House's reports. According to their report, the strength of American democracy is falling rapidly. India is no longer a free country, and only 20% of the world's population currently lives in a liberal democracy. In the rest of this episode, I'll discuss how they decide on their ratings, talk about some of Freedom House's major findings, examine why democracy has been struggling recently, and hopefully finish on a more optimistic conclusion. So first, who are Freedom House? What is the Freedom in the World ranking, and how do they decide the results? As I previously mentioned, Freedom House is an organisation founded in the USA, which attempts to assess the levels of democracy and freedom globally. They are not the only organisation to do this, but their Freedom in the World report is one of the oldest and most famous quantitative measures of democracy. What does quantitative mean? Well, quantitative data is data that can be counted, measured, or expressed using some kind of numbers. So Freedom House's report is based on this kind of quantitative data. An alternative way of measuring democracy, or any kind of research really, would be by using qualitative data. Qualitative data is descriptive and conceptual, not number-based. I'll give you an example. I did some research on voting behaviour a few years back. I was looking at whether the type of school you attended affected the way you vote in the future. An example of a quantitative approach to researching voting behaviour would be looking at the voting statistics and data of voters' education backgrounds. A qualitative method would be interviewing a few people and recording their answers. Although Freedom House wasn't always the most reliable ranking, major reforms in 1990 and 2006 have made the organisation much more trustworthy. Old problems such as a bias towards the USA and their allies have been reduced considerably. You just need to look at this year's rankings to know Freedom House is not biased towards the USA. To produce the 2021 report, Freedom House brought together more than 150 experts to assess a detailed questionnaire about the state of political freedoms and civil liberties in 195 countries and 15 non-state territories with separate governments. That sounds a little bit confusing, 
But what Freedom House has done is they've taken all of the U United Nations recognized democracies. They've added a few other countries, which also count as countries according to many international organizations. And then 15 other territories, which are not countries and are not internationally recognized as countries, but do have some kind of independent government. So, for example, Hong Kong. It's not a country, but it does have some kind of government itself. Questions they ask include, are there free and independent media? And is there a realistic opportunity for the opposition to increase its support or gain power through elections? Questions like this are then answered by giving a score between zero and four. So zero is the strongest negative answer and four is the strongest, strongest positive. The highest possible score is 100, which would be a perfect democracy. And the lowest possible score is zero, a perfect dictatorship. However, if you look at the rankings, you might notice that at the bottom of the rankings, some of the countries actually go into negative numbers. The countries that score the closest to 100 qualify as free countries. The ones closer to zero qualify as not free countries. And then those around the midpoint fall into a mixed, partly free category. So Finland, Norway, and Sweden tied for top spot in the recent rankings with a perfect score of 100, while the territory of Tibet and the country of Syria scored only one out of 100 at the bottom end of the scale. So now we know how the Freedom in the World report works. What were the main findings of this report? Before I go any further, I just want to be clear that I am just reporting the findings of this report. These are not my opinions, but the opinions of Freedom House and their experts. If you come from a country that might be criticised, please don't take it personally. And if you disagree, that is perfectly fine. And I'd actually be really interested to hear your reasons why you disagree. This is not a criticism of the people of a country or the culture of a country, but it is an evaluation of freedom and democracy in a state. So now I've got that out of the way, let's move on. First, one of the most shocking conclusions is the falling position of the USA. In 2005, the US scored 94, making it one of the best performing countries in the entire world. By 2020, the US had fallen 11 points to 83 out of 100. This is one of the largest drops out of any country in the same time period. The US is still in the free category, but they are now closer to Poland, Romania and Mongolia than the UK, Scandinavia and Western Europe. The USA lost three points in 2020 alone. Why? Well, reasons include the problems with Donald Trump's refusal to concede the election, uh, confusing public health recommendations, lots of political arguments, the massive coronavirus death rates, and police violence against protesters. The report claims that all of these have demonstrated the weakness in the US system and made American democracy appear unstable. Moreover, this report only covers events in 2020, so it doesn't even mention the violence at the US Capitol building in early January this year. While America's decline is shocking, it probably isn't the most significant finding of the report. India, the world's largest democracy, has declined so much recently that the country fell out of the free category. It is now only ranked as partly free. As with Trump in the USA, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi takes a lot of responsibility for this deterioration. Journalists who criticised the Indian government's pandemic response were arrested, 
while the country's independent legal system was under pressure from the government and protesters have been treated harshly. All of this combined to make India fall in the annual rankings. Not surprisingly, China was one of the lower scoring countries. However, the report highlights China's influence as one of the reasons for declines in other territories. In areas like Hong Kong and Tibet, which are counted as territories with some degree of autonomy by Freedom House, this influence is very direct and obvious. Uh, this is not a statement about whether China should control these places or not, but China does control Hong Kong and China does control Tibet. And the control they hold over these places, especially in Tibet, is much stronger than, than the control over China itself. So Tibet is the lowest ranking territory in the entire system. In addition, the indirect influence of China in interfering with other countries' politics, uh, being overly secretive during the initial stages of the coronavirus pandemic, and in stopping international organizations from fighting human rights abuses around the world, has also been significant. Many of the countries declining in the rankings are small, partly free nations, who have turned to China over the last few years, as the USA stepped back from the international stage. The report shows coronavirus was one of the biggest challenges to democracy in 2020. Both democracies and dictatorships used a lot of surveillance, uh, prevented the freedom of assembly and movement, and sometimes used violence to enforce their rules. Lies and fake news caused people to be confused and distrust their governments. In Hungary, for example, a series of emergency measures allowed the government to take more power, despite the fact that there were hardly any coronavirus cases until autumn. Ethiopia is a country that had made de democratic progress in recent years, as new Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed lifted restrictions on opposition media and political groups and released imprisoned journalists and political figures. However, a recent conflict in the region of Tigray has damaged their democratic score. The government has asked for support from neighbouring Eritrea, which is one of the world's strongest dictatorships. Um, elections were postponed in Ethiopia and many civilians have died in this civil conflict. I'll include a link to the Freedom in the World report in the description of the podcast and also in the blog post. It's not the easiest thing to read, but it is fascinating and concerning. Um, there are also lots of newspaper articles and magazine articles out there um, which might break it down a little bit easier if you're interested in reading more. Um, there are also profiles on Freedom House's website on each country or each territory they assess, so you can see how your country did. It seems clear that in many parts of the world, democracy is in decline. But why? Why is it in decline? If you listen to the powerful authoritarian regimes in the likes of Russia and China, it is declining because democracy doesn't work. Freedom House disagrees with this. Of course they do, they're American. Instead, they argue democracy is declining because the strongest and most powerful democratic states are not doing enough to protect global democracy. Over the last five or six years, the USA, the UK and European countries have been distracted with their own political problems. Countries which used to rely on the West for support have had to turn to China, Russia and the Middle East instead. And while these countries are often happy to give financial support, they do not promote democracy. Freedom House argues that democratic governments have a responsibility to work together and support democracy around the world. They also must make sure that their own politics and democracy is strong and successful. This episode has not been the most positive. 
I'm talking about the decline in democracy, after all. However, it is not completely negative. And 2020 was not a completely negative year for democracy. There were some bright spots in the darkness of 2020. The Freedom in the World report, for instance, points to the African country of Malawi. Now, Malawi is not a rich country and not known for its democracy. However, the country's constitutional court resisted bribery and political pressure to order new elections in 2020, which were then won by the opposition party. This case of Malawi shows that independent and democratic institutions can stop the abuse of power. Freedom House also highlighted Taiwan as an excellent case of democracy. Taiwan is in fact rated at 94, which is higher than my country, higher than the USA, higher than many traditional democracies. Taiwan has probably been the most successful place at dealing with coronavirus, and it did so while respecting people's freedoms. They also held democratic elections last year and are still successfully resisting the influence of China and China's general actions towards Taiwan, which China claims as part of Chinese territory. Finally, I started off talking about the decline of the USA. In 2021, however, there is a new government in America and a new president. The Biden administration is trying to repair the damage caused to the USA's democracy and reputation by Donald Trump. Hopefully, with, the, with US leadership and successful coronavirus vaccines, 2021 will be a much more democratic and free year. What do you think about the 2021 Freedom in the World report? Do you think it is possible to measure democracy? How about your country? Is your country democratic? Is it free? Is it partly free? Is it not free? And how did they perform in the rankings? I'd really encourage you to go and have a look uh, on Freedom House's website and have a look at your country's own ranking. It can tell you a lot about, you know, where you live. We tend to think of our own countries, um, well, at least I do, as someone from the UK, we're sort of taught that the UK is this great and brilliant country. But as, as I got older, and as I studied more politics, as I studied more history, I realized the UK is not really that great a country. It has problems, and perhaps more problems than many other countries, and, and the UK has also caused problems for hundreds of other countries and territories. So by looking at the rankings, you can see, you know, where are the problems in your country? Where are the issues? Is it corruption? Is it electoral fraud? Is there a lack of freedom? And finally, are you pessimistic or optimistic about the future of democracy? In the 1990s, people thought that democracy was it. That was the final stage. The world was going to become a fully democratic place. It doesn't seem so likely right now. What do you think? Thank you for listening to today's episode of Thinking in English. Please share with your friends, check out our social media links in the description and send us a message. We really appreciate all of your feedback. And if you have any ideas for topics or future podcast guests or any other learning format, please let us know. And please leave me a rating. We're now on Instagram. I'm sure you've already seen it, but go there, check it out. Lots of good content about vocabulary, pronunciation and grammar. And Instagram is a great way to contact me. Uh, it's Thinking in English podcast on Instagram or the link is in the description. Also, all of the transcripts of the podcast are now available on the Thinking in English blog. Um, vocabulary list, comprehension questions, and all of the articles are there for you to read. Um, that link is also in the description, so please check it out too. Thank you, and see you next time.